Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about omens. <clears throat> so this is part of a series uh, that I'm trying to do on omens for each of the planets. So you have a planet that represents a different vibration or energy, uh, like how there is really one source of light, the sun. There is one God, one source, one self. Ultimately, um, the rays of the sun can appear as a rainbow, as a, appear as seven different beautiful colors and rays. And this is all the planets are. There are seven planets, and the seven rays of the planets are just the seven different expressions of God. So none of them are any more or less God, really. They're all God. Um, I guess the sun is the most pure form of it, but they're all the same thing. So <clears throat> I talked about Saturn in the last video on omens. You can look that up on my channel. Uh, this one, I'm going to talk about the sun, the pure symbol of the spirit and of the self shining through. There are a lot of different omens that can relate to the sun, and this probably won't be the only video I do on it. Um, one that I'm not going to talk about is, of course, uh, lions, wildcats, the leo, the lion, <clears throat> panthers, cheetahs, jaguars, lynx, things like that. Those are always going to connect to the sun in some regard. Uh, as well as big wild beasts of prey just across the board. Because, and, if, and we know this because Jaimini in the Upadesha Sutras describes Leo as being the sign of wild beasts of prey. And that, uh, I believe he says, Seisha Swapadane or Swapadani, it's, uh, it's a word that can also mean one's own place remains. And so Leo is also a sign about territory and being strong in yourself in your own place and having dignity and being strong in your territory and deals with your own homeland uh, as opposed to foreign nations. But there is a definite connection that the sun will have to wild beasts of prey. Um, beasts that are like, uh, are so raw and powerful that they almost convey this terrifying quality, um, this awe, awestruck quality to them. And that's the quality of the sun, just like how the sun is actually like so powerful, it's kind of too powerful for our own capacity, for our own ability to understand it. Uh, that's why we can't look at the sun without going blind. Uh, that's the reality of God. We can't just directly perceive God in our reality <clears throat> for more than a moment. And that is the exact reason why we can't see the sun for more than a moment. And that's the astrological truth there. Uh, we can look at the moon all night and it looks beautiful and it can be adored and it can be appreciated and it's softer and juicier. Uh, or like it's, you know, it's, it's sort of like the essence of juiciness and enjoyment as Robert Svoboda has said. So this is why the moon and, uh, Worship of the moon is easier and feelings and emotions in, in your spiritual path are an easier way to bring you to God because it's just too hard for the average person to just directly perceive God. So we need the intermediary of the moon, the manas, the mind, the feeling nature. So this is all just a part of Vedic wisdom. But this, my point that I want to mention here is that the, <clears throat> the sun represents that raw aspect of the self. So it can represent lions, you know what I mean? Like a terrifying lion or a wild beast that's just so powerful and raw looking like that is a great symbol of the, that raw, pure, uh, indescribable aspect of the sun and pure spirit. So I've always had this beautiful, like this real, uh, attraction and love for great beasts and I also think of dragons a lot when I think of this and myths and stories about wild dragons and beasts and like that there's this divine quality that they have as well 
um, that kind of connects to this. Another way that you can see this is that Shiva or Shiva is described as the sun or the connected, the deity connected to the sun most commonly. And Shiva is just totally raw and just the pure self. That's the whole, that's what all that symbolizes. Like he's got nappy dreaded hair. He doesn't give a damn about his hair. He's got ash all over his face. He does not have pretenses. He does not care about, he just doesn't care. <laughs> and <clears throat> he's that raw aspect of the self. He just is everything. So why bother to relate or get emotional or this or that? For Shiva, that's not necessary. He's directly already at that stage. He's got cobras around his neck. You know, um, just a lot of things that can, in a similar way, be kind of terrifying or uh, strike awe in you. Uh, another thing that I think of with this is related to in the Bhagavad Gita when Krishna says to Arjuna, <clears throat> you know, if a thousand suns were to rise in the sky, that might faintly resemble God, you know? Um, we just can't perceive it. And if you can imagine, try it with your cognition to imagine just two suns rising, how bright that would be, then three suns, then four, try to build it up to even a hundred, not even a thousand, and your mind can't, can't fathom it. Um, <clears throat> so that has to do with the sun. So bald eagles are kind of also another symbol of the sun, and that's a symbol of spirit, according to Native Americans. Bald eagles are pretty powerful. Um, they look powerful, they're noble, they're, they have this big white thing, they fly independently, they fly much higher than other, other birds, typically, way, way higher. When you see them, they're very, very high up a lot of times. Um, they're independent, they're very just solar. Um, they don't eat anything dead, they only eat living uh, animals. They're, uh, they're a good symbol of the sun. And the sun also has to do with birds in general, uh, according to Brihat Parashar Horjastra. Now, there was this one time, so here's an interesting sun uh, omen for me, but I want to first pretext that in my chart, my son isn't, he's, my son's exalted in the Vamsha and other charts, but it's not that strong in the Rashi chart, which is the most important Varga for the sun. And it's starved by Saturn. And when the sun is starved by Saturn, uh, being in Aquarius or being strongly aspected by Saturn or being in Capricorn, one's survival, one will be going to fulfill their inspirations, which is the role of the sun, pursuing their inspirations, and their survival can be directly threatened as a result of that, which is Saturn, survival. So this can happen a lot. Um, someone wants to do something and uh, the world or Saturn or time basically is like, no, you're not able to do this or you're, or you're not, you know, you're not ready to do this or you're not going to be able to do this. Um, people who like end up giving up their job or their, um, or people who end up not being able to pursue their inspirations due to like just not being able to survive for whatever reason or having their survival threatened doing that or something has to do with Saturn starving the sun because Saturn represents the root chakra and survival and like your basic needs and everything. And so <clears throat> um, during my Saturn return, this was in the last year or two at some point during last Saturn, the, during the time of my Saturn return, that Avashta was being triggered um, at different times a lot throughout this period. And so I was at a point where I had fallen into all of these expenses and I wasn't sure how to survive. And even though I made a lot more money um, at doing the astrology, moving into doing that full time than I had in any other job, still was, I had just so many more expenses than I ever had imagined. I had a weird family situation kind of happen and I can't really go into all that. <clears throat> Let's just say it was my karma. <laughs> Um, and I was really terrified if I was going to be able to survive or what, because, uh, at the, in the position that I was in, it was like, there was almost no direction I could go to find anything. Like I would have to maybe just leave the country, move to some ashram and hopefully be able to do that and, and do astrology readings in the meantime and save up money over like course of a year. If an ashram would allow me to, that was my best hope 
if this didn't work out. And if this doesn't work out, that's still my best hope. Um, but uh, this was like about, gosh, roughly two years ago. So I'm still surviving for now. Hopefully I will continue with the grace of God and with the support of nature. Um, unplanned, unasked for good fortune or grace is always available to us. We just have to be receptive to it. Uh, so that's a little bit of pretext to where I was at at this time in my life when this omen happened. I didn't, I don't know, like I just, I was real sad because I had been, you know, in this profession, you'll email people for like hours and hours and then maybe just never even hear back from them and never get the reading you were, you spent hours talking them with and setting up for and everything and they changed their mind or something. And, um, this is an eighth house profession. So you just get screwed all the time is basically what I'm saying. Um, and so you, so I'm, I was, again, it was just like, you know, a repetitive thing, you know, was, Oh, again, okay. Um, don't have the expected resource I was going to get. Don't know how I'm going to pay this bill in the next few days. Uh, this is giving anxiety. So I went out to the garden to do some gardening because that's my backup plan is at least I can eat food if I have a garden. Um, and so I was in their garden just kind of cogitating on all this thinking like, why am I? God, dude, I'm very overqualified for a lot of the things that I do. It's just a part of my nature. I'm not trying to, there's a lot of things that I'm not good at, but that's one thing that I'm, things that I, train myself where I can do them very well. And so I'm very skilled in my job and just sort of sitting around waiting for the opportunity to do my job, which I wasn't finding. And at that time I was very scared and just thinking about all this and praying to God inwardly and thinking about God and a bald eagle. And what really what happened was all of the wildlife started screaming and freaking out and flying. And I was like, what? And I looked over and this looked over to the lake, and a bald eagle was just flying down and it was just, like, I just saw this big splash and a bald eagle came out with a huge fish in his mouth, like really, really big fish. Um, and he flew off and all the birds and animals were like thinking they were about to get attacked or something. And, but they ended up being, uh, being fine. And all, some of them were even chasing the bald eagle, like the crows and stuff. Uh, so that bald eagle just smashed in and grabbed a fish and flew out. And immediately I just had this feeling, this inner emotional feeling of like, wow, like just great spirit just spoke to me or just touched me. It was just like, wow, you are going to be okay. You know what I mean? Like you are going to survive and spirit and life itself is going to provide for you just as it provides for this eagle and just as it provided for the fish, which was huge and must have lived a big happy life, probably came from the ocean because they swim in at high tide and get trapped in this lake. So there's tons of fish in there. No big deal there. Um, so after, so, you know, it was funny is I like, I went and did yard work um, and kept doing some more yard work. And then when I went back home, like someone else had emailed me and wanted a reading too. So it was like this funny thing where I was, and then I was, you know, externally it was validated with someone, you know, got a reading, which was enough money for me to keep the bills paid, to keep the lights on, to get, buy more food um, and keep going. And that's all you really can expect when you're in Saturn periods where Saturn is afflicting you is just surviving. You can just survive. That actually feels amazing when Saturn is really afflicting you and you people who watch and know this, we've all had this to some degree, but um, those of you who have dealt with Saturn know how that feels. So, so yeah, it was a good feeling to go and to live and fight another day. So that's an example of the sun, um, a sun omen. It was like just this solar feeling of, nope, everything is here. It was like, it just was this thing for my, more of my emotional body. I can't really even com convey this, but the feeling that it left me with was a profound feeling. Um, and, you know, really with omens, like this is one thing that you should really try to use if you're studying astrology a lot for yourself because they don't require all the technical minutia of chart work that takes more like years and years to do. Um, omens are a more direct, quick, and really intimate way of seeing how life communicates to you and is always trying to communicate to you. I've only seen a bald eagle like once, one or two other times too out here. They're an endangered, they're, 
well, they're like coming back from being endangered, but they were very endangered because of this uh, DDT pesticide that was sprayed back in like the 70s or 80s, and it was making all their shells very, very thin. Um, and then the eggs wouldn't hatch or something like that. Um, okay, so here's another little, mm, well, with that said, that's my story, that's my omen. Here's my own opinion <clears throat> about another really, really important omen, in my opinion. <laughs> but this is more speculative, and I don't, and it even branches into political stuff, which I stay away from for the most part, because I think as a spiritual person, I have no real business in politics for the most part. I mean, aside from humanitarian issues. Um, <clears throat> and I think a lot of that can be a real trap that people set up to intentionally divide most of us. But I want to mention, <clears throat> I do want to mention this weird thing. Um, so on the day, so once this happened, um, I'm sharing my screen. I hope that you guys can see this. But uh, one time on May 14th, 2013, two bald eagles were in an air battle crash land at an airport. They fought each other, which is not common, or like not, this has never really been seen before, and they got locked into each other's talons and fell to the ground while caught in a battle. And they both survived. One of them flew away at that time and the other got nursed back to health. Look at how angry that one looks. <laughs> I mean, that is, oh man, that is just an iconic image there. This was at an airport. Um, mainly want you to note the date, May 14th, 2013. Okay, so let me see. now let me show you this. This is a freeze frame because I wasn't able to find the original article, but I remember when this came out, This I, was, I followed this when this came out, and I wanted to dig this back up. Uh, I was not the person who made this connection, so I'm not taking credit for it. This I've, I learned about this from uh, David Wilcock from Divine Cosmos, who is a pretty crazy, profound researcher of metaphysics stuff, but I'm not necessarily endorsing everything he does or researches, but this is very cool. So May 13th, 2013, the day before, was the day that the Snowden, Edward Snowden NSA disclosure leaks came out. <sighs> So this was the day that basically the whole world, not just the whole country, found that the Department of Justice was snooping on the press, associated mess, DOJ snooped on the press. The fact that the NSA was monitoring everyone. Um, the fact that, you know, our cell phone conversations, the fact that me talking to you right now, this is being recorded, sent off to some data vault, they just built a new one in Utah or something or whatever, and then being recorded and just stored later without any of us knowing. Now we know, but we did not know this. Everyone, everyone always laughed when people said like, oh, the government's spying on you, the government's listening to everything you say, blah, blah, blah. Um, and turns out that really was the case. You know, they, the government, at least the U.S. government, really, really was actually spying on us this whole time and really was listening to everything we said. <clears throat> so how how crazy is it that may 13th 2013 uh was when this news really broke but it was kind of i guess like behind the scenes building up for a while that's when this broke into the collective consciousness and then that is the day after that was the day that the uh the two bald eagles crashed uh, into each other. So, you know, uh, the person, you know, the people that brought this up were basically saying that this is obvious that an obvious omen, you know, an obvious, or Dave Wilcock, he's, a, he's really into this idea of synchronicity, which Carl Jung first coined this term. And as astrologers, we know that this, that is just what we're talking about too. You know what I mean? It's synchronicity. Uh, the or you know physics people can call it quantum entanglement whatever words you want to use but that's the same phenomena of how astrology is working is life's always communicating things are always synchronizing 
it's really correlation, not causation. I'm not actually saying Jupiter is causing this thing to happen. It's just correlating. Um, all right, so bald eagle symbolized the sun, symbolized spirit. Well, U.S. is kind of the solar, the king nation of the world, and the U.S. is just a very solar nation across the board. I've already talked about that. The bald eagles are symbol. Um, two bald eagles fighting symbolizes that there are two factions within the government at war with each other right now or at this point and probably are still at war with each other. That's, in my opinion, that's in the, in my interpretation of this and that when this came out, this, this symbolized uh, that war bubbling up like to an explosive degree, you know, to a point where it was, uh, it was like, it was an officially a battle, you know, it was officially a war. Um, we don't know. I don't know what's really going on inside the government, but I, you know, I think there's probably been a lot of crazy stuff that's happened since this with regard to all this and it, more of in a cold war sense where we don't really know what's going on, but we definitely know that this is, uh, just a little bit too much of a synchronicity, you know? So I just felt like mentioning that, thought it was really neat. Um, you know, two, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of ideas that there's, you know, different people within our government that have hijacked it for a long time, ever since World War II or the not, you know, NASA, Project Paperclip. Those are things you can look up and learn about. So that's sort of... Uh, <coughs> Something I can't prove one way or the other, <clears throat> but it is a very interesting synchronicity. So I hope you guys enjoy that. All right. Thanks, you guys.